We're coming up on the 5 o'clock hour. This is about 30 seconds before 5 o'clock. And we're coming up on the 5 o'clock start time for our show. And the Video Pro is saying that we are live. And it's going to be straight up 5 o'clock in about coming up on 15 seconds. So there you go. On the east coast of these United States. Beautiful day here in Thurmont, Maryland. I got a nice long walk in. Got several great walks all this week. And I can't complain about that whenever the weather's good enough for me to get out and about and also make things happen. We did a little commercial video and photo shoot at Adventure Park USA yesterday. And that was a lot of fun. There'll be some, a uh, couple of new 30 second commercials will be produced that he's going to run up on the local cable TV. Got to use the old media sometimes, I guess. I wouldn't, but oh well. They're going to do that, so there you go. That's how that works. So we're going to talk about the Geneva seal. And a viewer brought up the question, do Grand Seikos, would they meet the quality standards of a Geneva seal? And that's an interesting discussion. Now, let me see if I can bring up the video here on my iPad so that I can keep an eye on what's going on. In the chat, there we go. Blue Shirt Buddha's in the house. Carlos is in the house. And um, we've got uh, R. Wags is traveling. He's flying back from the West Coast, so he said he is not going to be here live. Sound okay here. Lambert in the house. Hi, Craig, and all no sounds. Liberty says no sound. Testing one, two. And um, let's see if anybody else has sound. Lambert says sound is okay there. Well, when I started the show, I wasn't talking right at the very beginning, so maybe that's what, what it was. So let me know uh, if anybody else has any audio. And speaking of audio, I was working with um, the Stevester earlier today doing some audio checks, and he's gotten he got a boom arm like this so that he can get the mic closer to his mouth, and we got the audio sounding really good. So he's planning on doing a show tomorrow. He was going to do one today, but he got too wrapped up with some customers. And so um, he probably will not do a show today. So that's why I decided to go ahead and schedule one and do it. And then I had a grinder come on in the comments on one of my comments. And he, he just won't. He's like a dog with a bone, you know. He Oh, you're disingenuous. You know, you, you lied about... The, why you sold the snowflake and blah 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 and all this th um, well you know from what I can recall I think I was pretty straightforward about the snowflake I mean I said that it didn't have loom I didn't like that it didn't have micro adjustments didn't like that and it was a little bit too thick for me to wear under my dress cuffs and but that I think it's a beautiful watch. A lot of people think it's a beautiful watch. For a lot of people, it would be a great solution if you have better eyes than me. And if you don't wear tight shirt cuffs like I tend to wear, again, my situation's a little bit unusual. My shirt cuffs, when I'm wearing a long shirt, they're pretty tight. And so I need a very trim watch, or at least relatively trim watch. Like this one's 12 mils. Uh, thick by a 39 mil watch and it it fits under even even my tightest uh, French cuffs and you know I mean it's not loose under there but it fits and it works if it was 10 mils thick that might be even better right but uh, th that one works the snowflake was really pushing it to to do that and I thought I was pretty clear about that on several broadcasts I told him I said you got to go back and and recheck the broadcasts and he's oh no 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 yeah you know, and 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 then I told him I said and also one of the reasons why I sold it was I had a buyer in hand that that is actually a subscriber and a listener to the show and it was a very easy transaction and I've talked about that before I've talked about <laughs> the good time to sell something is when you really don't have to sell it and you're not in a hurry to sell it but it, the, just the right buyer comes along that's the best time to sell something. And the best time to buy something is when you don't really need it. You're not in a hurry. You can 
you can do with or without it and just the right buy comes along like a really nice one owner low mileage car a friend of mine by the way is looking at a 2002 Lexus LS 430 with the luxury package I had a 2002 LS 430 but it did not have the luxury package the luxury package gets you the air suspension gets you the um, uh, valances in the back, the, the sun shades on the side and in the rear, and, and the massager on the rear seat, and some other high end features. It was like a, I don't know, ten or fifteen thousand dollar option. I don't remember now, but um, a friend of mine's looking at one with fifty thousand original miles on it, and she might grab that puppy. So that'd be kind of cool. Kind of cool to have a two thousand two. Lexus LS 430 with 50,000 original miles on it, garage kept one on her car. That might not be a bad move. So anyway, and I've talked about these things before, folks. I mean, I don't understand this grinder in the, in, in the comments. I, I thought that I was pretty clear about things, and, and I tried to, you know, one thing about this microphone, this is a Beta 57A microphone and it's known for being pretty clear for the spoken word pretty clear pretty concise I mean it's it's uh, if you want to be understood this is a good microphone solution to do that so I thought about getting a shotgun mic an expensive Sennheiser a thousand dollar shotgun mic and positioning it and pointing it to me but I think that would pick up more of the fan noise. So I think I'm really delivering the best possible audio that I can given the circumstances here. And, and you know, watches, it's the same kind of thing. Every watch has a different use case. All watches, no watch is perfect. I haven't stumbled across the perfect watch yet. That's good for all circumstances and for everybody's use case. They're all different. So the snowflake might not have been perfect for me, but a lot of people love it. And I'll stand by that. I'll stand by the fact that a lot of people love it. And a lot of people are starting to dig that 005 as well. Um, they're selling well. They're, there's a backlog now on the 005. That, that GMT, that's a heavy use. That's a, that's a durable piece. I focused right there on the uh, minute hand. You see the GMT is a little soft and the Grand Seca is a little soft. I focused right on the minute hand. So you can see that brushing a little bit on that minute hand. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the watch is all, um, it's a directional dynamic microphone. Yeah, it has a, I think they call it a, a carteroid pickup pattern. It is very directional. So if I go off axis like this, it drops off pretty quick, which is what I need to, because of this daggone fan noise right here with the switcher that I'm using to switch cameras. I need that so I can reach it easily and the, they've they engineered this thing so the fan blows right out in the bottom right hand corner right out the front worst possible place for it to blow out that's the only real Achilles heel of the Roland. And now I have heard some people complain if you use it in hot weather. I've heard some people say they've had problems with it actually overheating, even though it has that loud fan. They could have done a much better job on the cooling on that on that puppy. So it's that. Today I bought GS Diver SBGA231, wonderful timepiece, and I owned Rolex GMT and Sub, and this is quality, couldn't be happier love the wrist presence okay so he's got this piece here this is the diver the the um, titanium diver so he's really stepped up and bought the titanium diver and yeah the geneva seal that was one of the subjects and and here's the thing the geneva seal really from what i've read about it it's really not necessarily all about quality it's providence and different different things go into you being able to use that Geneva seal so it's not strictly quality 
uh, for example, I don't think any Rolexes have the Geneva seal. Uh, not, not that they're known for being extremely high quality, but you know, you, you have to go through a process. You have to have, I think you even have to have the plans for the watch approved. I mean, there's a, it's a whole process. And I will say that, that I think that, and by the way, I used this image and I did link to this from my description in the video because I, I used their image and I did link to this article. So I want to give them full credit. But yeah, it's a nice article, tells all about it. But it's not strictly a, okay, I'm going to compare the quality of this watch to this watch type of thing. It's, it's a little bit more nuanced than, than all that. And I think the, the way this conversation, the way this came up, is the, the subscriber asked the question, could Grant Seiko qualify for this seal, assuming they jump through all the hoops necessary? In other words, assuming it was assembled in Geneva, assuming the plans of the watch were approved, all that, assuming they went through all that. In other words, would the quality be up to snuff for, compared to like a Vacheron Constantin or something, right? And, and I think the answer is absolutely yes. I think the, the quality on these GSs are, are it's, it's stellar. I think the quality is fantastic. I, I definitely have said many times, I think it's a step up from Rolex for sure. Rolex is a mass produced, mass market watch really uh, with just excellent branding and marketing, just superb branding and marketing. And of course, great, um, great designs, you know, iconic designs. They're smart in that they get a design that really works and they just keep making it year after year. I mean, I think that's very smart. I think Grand Seiko could learn a lot when it comes to branding and marketing from the folks at Rolex. Uh, let's see here. Patek stopped with Geneva Seal some years ago. Avoid paying, I assume, or because they do not consider a great bench benchmark now. Maybe they just didn't want to jump through all those hoops, you know? Maybe yeah, maybe they just didn't want to jump through those hoops. And and can you imagine Patek being like having to be beholding to somebody else saying, "Hey, you got to do this, this and this." <laughs> I mean, I would tell them <laughs> also, right? The heck with you. Um so yeah, they don't need they don't need that uh, seal of approval. Um thanks Tom, really love this diver don't miss Rolex Sub or GMT, but I'm keeping my Rolex Explorer 39 mil with the... Yeah, Joey, you're going to get to the point where it, this watch is going to hog a lot of wrist time. It is difficult. And I will tell you that this watch, the GMT, I was wearing it the other day. And I have to say, it is not as comfortable on wrist as the 231. It, it just is not. Even though this watch is a little more top heavy, it just all in all on balance, the whole experience of wearing it, this watch is straight up more comfortable on wrist. I mean, and they're about the same weight. Now this one is just a little bit heavier, okay? Because it's steel, of course, and, and even though it's a smaller watch, it's steel. It's a little bit heavier. But the balance is a little better because like I said, it's thinner, it, it rides closer to the wrist. But still, all those things taken into consideration, the 231 is more comfortable. And that's pretty wild um, to say that. And waiting for the 005 GMT on backlog with Steve. Yeah, I mean, they're starting to get harder to get. They absolutely are starting to get harder to get. And I will, I will want to hear your opinion on which is more comfortable, the 231 or the 005. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. Both are very comfortable. We're comparing. This has to be one of the most comfortable watches you can buy that's a decent-sized watch, right? I mean, this it, it is amazing how comfortable it is on wrist. So that's a high benchmark, right? The 005 is very comfortable on wrist, too, but... I give this one the edge, and it'll be interesting to see what Joey says when he has both and compare them, uh, compare wearing both of them. And by the way, Joey, when you had your bracelet sized, was it sized so that your micro adjustments are about in the middle so that you have some wiggle room either way on the micro adjustments? 
And did you get the, um, were you able to get the clasp pretty well centered underneath your wrist when you sized it? Interesting to know the answers to all that. And who sized it for you? If anyone's deserving the Geneva seal, it's uh, A. Lang and, and so, there you go. About Patek leaving Geneva seal with a lot of information, watch time. Wrist, there you go, there's an article for you guys. Craig 231 is titanium versus steel. You may be more acclimated to the 231. Yeah, I don't know really all the reasons to tell you the truth, but I can, like I say, my first experience with a titanium watch was the SBDC 007, the Shogun, which I wore for a few years. And it was amazingly comfortable on wrist. I really enjoyed wearing that watch. And that's why I ultimately stepped up to this watch was that was like the forebearer of, of you know, I said, okay, now maybe I can step up and have something in titanium that's a higher, takes everything to a higher level, right? And so have my cake and eat it too, have all the benefits of the titanium and have a high-end movement and, and, you know, the quality of a Grand Seiko. And, and when I finally got around to seeing one of these, of course, you guys know the rest of the story. It's all, you know, history. It ended up on my wrist. So, um, yeah, there's something really special about titanium. And I've seen a lot of debates online. I've seen people say, no, it really doesn't feel better against your skin. That's just poppycock. And then I've heard some people say, yes, it absolutely is better against your skin because it doesn't have the nickel in it and so on and so forth. And now I can understand some people have a nickel allergy, but I don't think I have a nickel allergy because I can wear steel watches with nickel in them and uh, I don't get allergic reactions, but still. And also some people say, well, you know, the thermal properties are such that it makes it more comfortable on wrist. And other people say that's poppycock. All I can say is me, my experience wearing them for years, first the 007, now this one for over a year. I've had this one for more than a year now and worn it almost every day. It is super freaking comfortable on wrist. All I'm going to say, blows away a Rolex Sub, a GMT. I've worn them all, and I wore the earlier ones, the versions that were more comfortable than the ones they make now. And this is more comfortable than those. Okay, so not even a close call. The only thing that would get close to this in comfort would be the day date was very comfortable, the 36 mil day date. Something about 18 karat gold against your skin. That really is nice. <laughs> um, the day date was very comfortable. The um, what else was very comfortable? Oh, my date just with the Jubilee bracelet was very comfortable. 36 mil date just. Um, but to be this size and to be this comfortable is is pretty freaking amazing. Let's see, Joey. They took two links off, and the GS logo clasp is dead center. So one link, one full link on either side, I guess. Uh, my 2019 Seamaster 300, I forgot it's even on my wrist. It was a tough choice between yours, Craig, or the Seamaster when I was in the watch store trying both. There you go. And it's loose and got plenty of micro play. Um, so you like to wear your watch a little bit on the loose side. Mine is a little bit loose, but not not terribly so. Um, I don't like mine to go down over the bone and flop down on the wrist. So, yeah. Um, when is GS going to put you on the payroll? Huh. They don't even talk to me. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even... <laughs> I, you know, they're halfway polite when I bump into them at an event, like when I was at uh, the little treasury event. You know, they're halfway polite. But I don't even th I don't even think they know I exist. I really don't. I, I mean, <clears throat> you talk about a company. And I, I don't mind saying this here on the channel because I know they're not going to hear it anyway. Right. I mean, you talk about a company that has no clue when it comes to marketing <laughs> and when it comes to branding I mean no clue right I mean first of all okay let's do that let, let's figure out how we can how we can screw this up right all right let's let's come up with complicated names 
and model numbers and stuff that nobody can figure out. Let's come out with a whole bunch of limited edition watches that nobody can figure out where they're available. Are they available in Japan or in the U.S. or whatever? Are they limited edition? Are they not? And, and let's be real cagey about when and where you can buy them. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's not support any channels that are pro Grand Seiko. Let's not even reach out to them and give them demo units or anything, right? Let's let let's let's like pretend they don't even exist. Right? Let's not contact, for example, Archie Luxury and send them a snowflake and say, hey, wear this for six months and talk about it on your show. Let's not do any of those things. Right? Um Yeah, that's Grand Seiko. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're, they're, they they couldn't market their way out of a wet paper bag. And let's put on an event in New York and have some of our executives sing karaoke. Some executives that can't sing, that have no stage presence. Let's throw an, an event and have some ice sculptures and stuff and, and invite some VIPs and, and have our CEO sing karaoke. <laughs> and let's see how that all goes off. <laughs> oh my gosh what a talk about a train wreck um, but they can make some fantastic watches <laughs> that's their saving grace is they've got some beautiful watches they also have some watches that are poorly designed if you ask me that they should have never made and they also should have micro adjustments on all the freaking bracelets especially any sport watch like this watch right there that watch should have micro adjustments on the bracelet period should have them so other than that let's see titanium's friction coefficient coefficient is about half that of steel alloys alloys coming at, at 65 to 70 percent of the friction co 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 coefficient so does that mean it's easier on your skin when your skin rubs against it is that what that means maybe that's part of it i think there's multiple factors at work here. Hey buddy, at Blue Shirt Buddha, there you go. Uh, let me see, let me refresh here and make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so that's the most recent comment. So yeah, I don't know, uh, I think we've covered a lot of what I wanted to cover. And like I say, Steve is planning on doing a show tomorrow. Uh, they screwed themselves, Lucia Buddha. How did they screw themselves? Too drunk for karaoke, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett songs. Carlos, I think these guys, even if they were stone cold sober, they wouldn't be able to sing. These these guys just can't sing. <laughs> and then, and then they've got these executives with tiny wrists, right, wearing these huge watches, right, huge watches with a suit, right, and a dress cuff and stuff. And of course, the watch couldn't fit under the cuff, right? So the watch is out and, you know, exposed below the cuff, you know, huge watch, you know, and they're like sitting there smiling like it's so cool and everything. And it looks absolutely ridiculous, right? I mean, this watch is pretty big, right? But it's a sport watch, and I think it looks pretty good on my wrist, right? But these guys, their wrist is like, two-thirds the size of my wrist right and they had an even bigger watch on right <laughs> you know the biggest one they could freaking get and like that 600 meter diver right that makes this one look tiny and they're sitting here you know yeah like it's so cool with their suit um meanwhile they could have had a crater on or something right something decent looking um yeah i think they got no clue right no clue uh Yes, less friction against the skin. Against the skin, it's smoother in general. Yeah, it feels really nice when you rub your your hand like like that along the edge and inside the bracelet and all. Yeah, it feels buttery, buttery smooth. And of course, it doesn't hurt. I'm sure that that the Grand Seiko finishing is freaking amazing. Um, <clears throat> any opinion on Rolex sport watch prices? starting to get soft. I don't know that the market is crashing yet. 
But I think that there will be a major adjustment. I've predicted at least a 40% adjustment coming. I don't know when. Uh, just like we don't know when there's going to be a downturn in the stock market, I mean a major downturn. Very hard to predict these things. But um, what's going to happen is, is most likely the market will clearly start getting soft. There will be some telltale signs. And then the speculators will start panicking and start wanting to unload. And then there will be a rush of supply coming into the market. And, and prices will just plummet rapidly rapidly it won't be something that you're going to have a lot of time you know when it when it when it gets to the point where you've got to liquidate it it might be too late i mean you might miss out you might be stuck uh, so i think some speculators are going to be are going to be left holding the bag i think that's going to how it's how it's all going to work let's see here i'm doing something dangerous for mechanical watch now i'm solving rubik's cube again I used to be very good at it 37 years ago. Now high-tech cubes have 48 strong rare earth magnets. Oh, okay. So those are going to get near that watch. I don't. I think you're going to be fine. Now, I, I think you've got to pretty much set a watch down on a magnet or something to really magnetize it. I've never had problems with magnetizing watches, even watches that aren't terribly anti-magnetic, right? I think that's a non-issue for the most part. Uh, can't see prices softening for a long time, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to happen. I don't. Long time? What do you mean? You, are you talking three years, five years? What do you mean by long time? I think it could happen any time from a year from now to maybe five years from now. I think that's probably the time frame. They screwed themselves even more when the the jacketed. Um, when I guess you meant they jacked their prices to Patek's level. Um, you talking about uh, Grand Seiko? I don't think that hurt them coming out with the high-end watches. They they sell a few of those here and there. They're very low production. I, I I don't think that hurt Grand Seiko. I think what hurts Grand Seiko is they have no clue how to brand their watches and how to market their watches and. Uh, they do treat their dealers decently. I'll give them credit for that. Uh, but I don't think they care. And I, I had a discussion with Steve about this. I think the pro I think they're selling all they want to sell. And, and I don't think they can scale up much more than they already have. They've added X number of dealers around the country. So they have more outlets. And I think they're at capacity. And I, and I think that they don't have enough interns being trained to increase their supply to the extent they would need to if they were doing a decent job marketing. So I think they've got a very small marketing budget, and I think that they don't need to spend more money on marketing because their production is, is probably where it needs to be, is my guess. I think they're doing fine as far as what they want to do. Um, they they cannot challenge a Rolex or an Omega. They can't make those kinds of numbers of watches. I mean, they just can't do it. So they've got to stay kind of niche, a, uh, a niche thing for the people. I think they're really, the watches are really for people that respect quality and want the best. It's just like my friend thinking about buying the LS430. And I talked to her about it. She knew I'd had one. And, I mean, it's just a hundred times better vehicle than a BMW or Mercedes from the same time frame. If you had a 2002 7 Series BMW, if they gave the car to you for zero dollars, you'd end up being screwed. They're so bad. <laughs> they give so much trouble. They're so expensive to maintain. Forget about it, right? Whereas the Lexus, if you get a decent one, about every 100,000 miles or so, you should have the timing belt servicing done, where they do the timing belt, the, the um, uh, water pump, maybe some belts and hoses, you know, whatever it needs. Do that about every 100,000 miles. 
and just run it indefinitely. There's many of them out there for 300, with 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 miles on them. It's routine with those, those Lexus uh, LS series sedans. You can't do that with a BMW or Mercedes without spending a bloody freaking fortune. Okay? It's just the way it is. So it's the same thing with Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko is just a better watch than these Swiss counterparts like Omega, Rolex, any of these other sport type, you know, Swiss watches. They're just not to the quality of Grand Seiko as far as lack of maintenance you're going to have to do, as far as just being trouble free where you can just wear it for literally decades without any issues. I mean, that, this is really the parallel with, between this and an LS sedan are just, you know, they're, they're all over the place. I mean, they're just, it's a, it's a perfect parallel. Um, and the same thing. I mean, people that have the BMW or the Mercedes would look down their nose at the LS sedan. Oh, it's a Toyota, right? You know, would be what they'd say. And, but they're clueless. They have no idea what a good car is if it jumped up and bit them in the you-know-what. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, Robert V, I'm sitting on some cash for my next Rolex. Yeah, you might as well wait for a deal. Absolutely. What are you saving for? We'll see. I am not saving. I have the money. I'd like to get into a Milgrau's or Polar Explorer 4. Uh, okay, there you go. I've got a Z Blue Milgauss. It's a stunning doll and a great watch. Okay. It's a beautiful watch. I just tried one at an AD. Those stock. Yeah, I just, the Milgauss is a little thicker, I think, than a Datejust. I, I'd go with a Datejust, personally. Uh, let's see here. Offered 10% off. Offered 10% off if I bought both. Well, okay. There you're starting to make some progress there. Why do you need them both, though? That's the question. Why do you need them both? Okay, let me reload this. See what we got here. Make sure I'm not missing any important comments. Um, okay, let me check. I think that is the latest. So um, I think we've covered what we need to cover. I think we'll, we'll call this one a, a brief a brief show. By the way, um, Eric from Adventure Park is planning on doing a live broadcast tonight for you Night Owls. It's going to start around midnight, maybe a little more before. I think we scheduled it for 11.30 p.m. Sometimes he ends up being late. Uh, 59 notifications. Oh, boy. All right, there's that. Let's see. I disagree in regards to the BMW comment. I have 196,000 miles on my BMW 328i. No squeals or sounds in the interior. Only thing I've ever had to replace outside the ordinary maintenance was a fuel pump. You're very, very lucky. And also a 328i is a is a lower line model. I was talking about the 7 series BMW, the high end ones. Those are the ones that tend to be more expensive to maintain. Uh, but you're going to get bit with the 328 if you drive it long enough. You've only got 196,000 miles on it. Give it time to bite you. It will bite you. It's like any snake. It's going to bite you at some point. And what do you mean by ordinary maintenance? How much have you spent on that maintenance? Okay. Um, and again, some people might beat the odds, right? And one thing is maybe you kept it away from the dealer and didn't get it near them enough for them to rake you over the coals. My Toyota Prius is a 2004, and the only time I took it to the, pre to the dealer, there was a recall that I took it in for that I had them do, and thank goodness they did a great job on it, and they didn't try to sell me any extra stuff. But other than that, I take it spring and fall to my local mechanic, who's really good, honest guy, and I have him do an oil change and go through it and, you know, Every 60,000 miles or so, I had the coolant flushed and all that. I had the transmission oil changed, just basic fluids and things like that. It's got all the original brakes on it, everything. You know, it's had almost nothing done to it. I've replaced the battery, the 12-volt battery, not the hybrid battery. It's original. 
12 volt battery, a little 12 volt battery in the back. I've replaced that twice since I've had it. Um, but it's been bulletproof reliable, but I do not make a habit of taking it to the dealer because the dealer will find things to sell to you if you hang out there. Um, I was looking at the new day chest because of the 70 hour reserve. I've showed you my day chest before. It's a stunner. Looking at the Milgau, Milgaus for for the weekends. There you go. It's a it's a first world problem <laughs> when we've got like multiple Rolexes and one for the weekend. Um, there you go. Okay. Uh, I did all the maintenance myself. Motor oil plus filter every 7,500 7, miles. Probably synthetic. I hope. Um, transmission fluid 80k spark plugs see that's smart that's probably one of the reasons why you haven't been bit is because you've been doing a lot of the maintenance yourself you haven't gone near the dealer for them to rake you over the coals uh, so there's that but give it time that that one will probably bite you something will something will come up and bite you on it give it a little more time uh, would you go for fluted or smooth bezel on the new digital See, the fluted doesn't show scratches. For those of you that care about scratches, and I know a lot of people do, the smooth bezel, every little scratch shows up like crazy, right? The fluted bezel, nothing shows up. It just slowly over time starts to wear down, right? But it doesn't show any scratches. So I would go with the fluted. I would go with the fluted bezel and the date just bracelet. If you're going to go with a smooth bezel, I'd get the oyster bracelet with the smooth bezel personally but it looks good with a date with a with a jubilee as well but yeah i'd go with the fluted um fluted i wear gold cufflinks tie bar bracelet etc during a week yeah i now again i think we were talking about a uh steel watch so it'd have the white gold fluted bezel and if you're talking about a steel and gold watch yellow gold and steel I don't know that I would go there personally. I would just get a date eight and go all gold if I'm going to throw throw uh, gold into the mix, yellow gold. Yellow gold, gold, go date eight. Let's see here what else is going on. Uh, I think that might be it. I think we might have solved all the world's problems let me know if you guys have any other questions or comments or anything make sure you click the subscribe bell the subscribe button and the bell for notifications and um, let's see here I'm going to check one more thing here okay yep that's okay everything's okay there get back in the app here to control this broadcast just in case we decide to stop it here let's see having said that my previous car was a Honda which I got from my parents as my first car for 2500 drove that thing throughout college sold it for a profit of 200 at 400,000 miles <laughs> well see obviously you take care of your cars and you're you're you know about taking care of cars and you're smart that way and you probably don't abuse them you 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 know might not drive them real hard you know when you start it up cold you probably drive it gentle while it warms up things like that normal things that people do that that know about cars and take care of cars so there's that yeah um, solves all the first world problems only problem is GSGMT 005 backlog yeah, and I don't know when it's going to get better anytime soon. Uh, I think that we're going to be, we might, you know, he's got backlogs on other models too. The 231 is starting to get harder to get. And I noticed that the 231, by the way, there are fewer and fewer of them on eBay. It used to be you could search eBay and you'd find like a dozen of them, right? You'd find some that were pretty beat up, pretty rough condition for like 4600 bucks, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, you don't see as many anymore, and the prices tend to be five thousand or north of five thousand for most of them. 
Uh, let's see what's on there right now. Let's let's check it out. Um, do a quick search on eBay. On eBay. Okay. Okay, so we've got one here. Seventy-one hundred or best offer. That's seventy-one hundred dollars is the list price, by the way, folks. Then we've got one for five grand, and we'll check on the condition of that in a minute. And then we've got one for sixty-two twenty-five, or best offer. Seventy-one thirty-nine or best offer, and then a Shogun. So see, there's not that much inventory here, folks. A lot of these are just dealers, I guess, trying to sell it, right? Uh, let's see the condition of this one. And, you know, I, I'm not making this stuff up, folks. I'm checking this live on eBay right now. So, you know, I, I'm not making this stuff up. This guy says, well, you're disingenuous. You know, you're misleading your, you're misleading your subscribers, you know? I don't have time to mislead my subscribers. I barely have time to do a show. You think I got time to calculate things and figure out how I'm going to mislead my subscribers? Okay, so let's take a look at this um, this watch. Let's see what we got here. Uh, looks good. Looks good. See, almost no scratches on the clasp. That's where you get your scratches because that's stainless steel, the clasp. It'll scratch real easily. The case back looks good. Everything looks good. So there you go. So you can buy that one for under five thousand dollars. It's a buy it now price, just under five thousand. He's not saying make offer, but you know you might even be able to make an offer and get it for a few hundred less. Uh, let's see what he says about. Um, Condition is pre-owned. Watch only a few time. Watch worn only a few times in perfect condition. Includes all packaging links. 2018 dated warranty card. Okay, so it's a, you know it sounds like it's a stand-up watch. Nice watch. You know it's a year old, and it's five grand. So, like I say, we're not seeing a bunch of them, and we're not seeing them for like. You know, forty-six hundred dollars asking price, and that type of thing, like we used to see. For but now, that would usually be a unit that had some pretty heavy use, a lot of scratches and stuff like that on it. I did, I'd, I've never seen them that low that were like pristine condition. They're usually around five thousand if they're pristine. That's usually seems to be about where they go. Um, all right, well, I think that's it. I think we're going to wrap this puppy up. Thank you everybody for watching. I got an event I got to cover tomorrow and so I don't think I'll be doing a live broadcast but Steve probably will and he's got and and let him know how his audio sounds cuz he got one of these boom arms and we did a test earlier and it sounded a lot better with that mic nice and close to his mouth. Uh so I think his audio is going to be a lot better than it was last time. It was very low last time. Uh so I think he's going to have that resolved. Eric is going to be broadcasting live from Adventure Park tonight. That's going to be an exciting broadcast, folks. If you guys are night owls, some of you all might want to tune in to that at about 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's going to be it for me for now. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great, fantastic weekend.